Morabito went to Ken Roxham with a 2.14.5. That was in the first session earlier in the day. Session two, Jason Anderson in that green 21. He was actually the fastest rider in that final group. Yeah, but it was right yep. there at 2.14, yep. So we are ready. Fly Racing 32nd card is up, and the first 450 moto of the day is about to be underway. Anderson and Ferrandis right there. So Ferrandis, who was not great with the starts last year, back with injury and back to the lead. Look at that. Somebody is fired up. He's happy to be back here in pro motocross. You got uh, Tomax going to settle in about fifth. I see Dungey in there. Who am I not seeing? Chase Sexton. Sexton. Yeah, exactly. So he's got a rough start. Anderson made a look on the inside. It was actually too slow. And here comes Roxon around the outside to attempt to take second place away. Well, this is really intriguing how it's shaped up. Roxon's so good at this track. Ferrandez is a true wild card. Don't know what he has. And Anderson very quick in qualifying this morning. Here we go. Roxon wants Anderson for a second time. Anderson holds him off. Yeah, and see how there, there are sections of the track where they threw down a lot of water. And if it's hard, if you throw down the water on the hard spots here on this first lap, it can be really dangerous. I know because this turn, I crashed with the lead one year uh, with well, the whole shot and, because and, I hit some wet dirt and slid out. I was not ready for the conditions. And oh, so and these guys are going to have to battle with that right now. I remember that froze, 96, I know. Yeah. And, uh, Jet Lawrence went down there not that long ago either. So that section is tough. Roxon just keeps working on Anderson for the number two spot. Going to take a third swing at it. And let's see what these guys can do. That's been the story. Can anyone get up there and challenge Tomac? Inside Sexton? line. Oh, Roxon and Anderson. Roxon aggressive takes the spot. Oh, man. And look at how the bikes are jumping around that section at, uh, where Roxon made the pass. It's so rough. They're coming through there. It's so fast. Huge holes are already starting. Oh, oh Anderson's Anderson. off. off the track. And Tomac's going to slip by him. Did you see Sexton? We got Sexton in okay. at about seventh, unless he got past Anderson with that mistake. Now they're going to make this left-hand turn, head back up the wall. Roxon looking to get around Ferrandis. What a comeback for Ferrandis. First time he's ever had the number one Watch to this. show off Watch in motocross. Roxon setting up the inside, Jeff. Way on the inside, tiptoes around. Oh, it almost worked. But the outside line momentum works. Ferrandis able to repass him. And Roxon not giving up on it. Can he seal the deal? He Just does. Just barely gets by. Well, it's, it, was, it was the question earlier today in our qualifying show was which Ken Roxon is going to show up today. Perfect conditions. He's won the last four motos here. He goes out, was your fastest qualifier uh, overall. And right now, he's just worked his, his way to the lead, and he's just got something figured out with this track here at Unadilla. Whether it's a little bit harder, drier, slicker today, the past couple of races where it was soft, deep, muddy, rutted, it doesn't matter. He just has got the mojo working. And he is pulling away quickly from the Monster Star Yamaha teammates, which is Ferrandis and now Tomac, who slipped by when Anderson was off track. Good recovery from Anderson. He's still right there in fourth. There's Plessinger, and Sexton is sixth. Then Dungey, Barsha Savachi, and Freddie Norin. Now Tomac looking for a way around Ferrandis. It's the battle we were hoping to see all summer long between the teammates. Oh, and you can see Tomac's getting it together now. Yeah, definitely. It'd be interesting to see how deep into the moto Ferrandis can go. Can he do the full 35 minutes, right? 30 plus two laps. Can he ride at this pace the whole time? Or with that injury and the time off is, is you know, see where his fitness is at. We talked to him yesterday for a while. He says, look, fitness wise, like on a cycling and all the training, he goes, I may be better than I've ever been. But then there's also bike shape, which is how you take that and actually apply it to your motorcycle for racing. And that's a totally different thing because he had a thumb injury not that long ago, and he just doesn't have the grip strength and the upper body strength, plus that sort of uh, bike shape, I call it, which is when you start to put it all together. Hey, Rock's on the mistakes, and because Ferrandis is getting pushed by Tomac, they've gotten back to him. So at the beginning of this lap,
It looked like Roxham was going to start building a lead, but it's a three-rider battle now. Yeah, watch Tomac in some of these sections. He's got this technique and this style where he's not really afraid to, to he kind of drags his his inside leg or, and that's it, well, there's the he's pass. Got him, there he's is, got yeah. second place. But he, he, he does that because he's really loose on the bike and he does it, you wouldn't necessarily teach it, but with him, his technique, it just works for him. That's just allows him to place the weight on the bike where, where he wants it, right? Weight the outside peg, but a lot of times he leaves that inside leg kind of loose and it kind of flies out there a little bit. I noticed he did it uh, coming up the wall um, and he just kind of lets the bike move under him. So just pay attention to that. It's, it's a very unique technique that Tomac has. So we're set up for another in what has been a decade long series of battles here in Pro Motocross and also Monster Energy Supercross, to be honest, between Roxton and Tomac, who are now 1-2. Hey, this tabletop right there, in between the 250 moto and this 450 moto, er, er, is right. what I'm talking about. Dangling. See the leg? Yep. The little dangle yeah, right there. The dangle. A little dangle. Um, that tabletop um, where we saw uh, Seth Hamaker go over the bars, they definitely took the dozers out and worked on the face of that. They cleaned that up. So that tells me probably the conditions of that takeoff was getting really dangerous. And so the crew here at Unadilla, Greg Robinson and his crew fixed it all up. Eli Tomac is on the run. He's pulled away from Ferrandis, and he is almost onto the rear wheel of Roxon. And look at the fans here in the back section. They're just, they're loving it. It's the most beautiful day I feel like I've ever been at here in Unadilla. Temperatures absolutely epic, just perfect skies. Track is just mint right now. Beta Motorcycles drone cam showing you Tomac looking for a way to show a wheel to Roxon, let him know he's there. They've gotten away from Ferrandis and Anderson and Sexton. So Sexton's got to get on his horse and go because Tomac. All right, look for the dangle here on the way up. <laughs> okay, all right. And Tomac's going to look for the lead. Ah, pretty, pretty clean through there. Oh, look how deep these ruts are right here. Got two different line choices. Tomac's not going to follow. You need to get out of that roost a little bit. Rocks and so smooth on the throttle. You see, when you go wide there, it's kind of like a bull turn. You go inside, you need to accelerate. You go wide, you're carrying your momentum. Kind of all evens out in the end. Oh, Tomac right there. We got a oh, yeah. battle on our hands at Unadilla. They pulled well clear already of Ferrandis. Tomac looking on the inside. Nothing there. Send it down to JT. Pretty interesting battle here, guys. On one hand, you have Ken Roxon, who's won the last four motos, and of course, both overalls on the way to that. And then Eli Tomac, as we see him make a pass, he's never won here on a 450. So two contrasting, two similar guys, but contrasting results here at Unadilla. Yeah, JT, and that pass by Tomac means something because yes, this has probably been his worst track, at least statistically, and it's Roxon's best, and it's early in the race where Roxon is usually riding well. You don't often see the charge of Tomac early, but the intensity in this championship is picking up, and oh. Tomac is right there with it. And that corner coming out of that rut, it comes out with this big hook. Then you got to get lined up, and there's just a little groove and a kicker on the top of that to clear that little, I'd kind of call it a double right there. It is so technical right now. The throttle control is, is so important, and Tomac just seems to have everything working perfectly. Anderson has made the move on Ferrandez so the Monster Energy Kawasaki rider who has generally been the number three guy with that Tomac Sexton battle up front most of the year is into third again but the difference is this time it's Roxon in second Sexton we see now in fifth the Thor battle box is going to show you Tomac and Roxon on the lower right while we watch this battle for third Ferrandez well I'm sure that was the goal get back and be in the thick of it and that's exactly what Ferrandez is but Sexton needs to go. It's around the outside, Jeff. So he used to call this the elevator shaft. Uphill. And wow, Sexton flies, makes the pass. Yeah, just gets the drive right there. Sexton, another rider that just has really just fantastic throttle control. He's good on the hard pack surfaces like one race ago at Washougal up in Washington. And right now he's he found himself um, pretty far back there in, in the top 10 off the start. And he's going to have to dig deep in this moto and just try to get, get through as many riders as he can. I mean, what, he's five seconds off? Yeah, and several. 
you have to get through Anderson and Roxon, which will not be easy to even have a shot at tracking down Tomac. So, big moment early today at Unadilla for Sexton, who has been matching Tomac stride for stride over the last couple of weeks. There's Ferrandis back in the mix in fifth. And Plessinger, Dungy, Savachi, Marchbanks, Barsha, oh, top 10. Oh. oh! The berm broke away right there as he tried to tried to really just hammer the throttle and off of that jump and some of that loose dirt in the rock it just kind of gave away he got pretty sideways and that's that's going to be the story all day long is you're going to have to have to try to find a way to be comfortable in a very uncomfortable situation right Oh, Mind bike. over matter right yeah, now. Yeah, bike's bouncing all over the place. Yeah. Anderson is staying aggressive in third, so Sexton's going to dig deep to go after him for this position. And the crowd loving this brewing battle. And you can see Roxon not too far ahead. Keep an eye on Sexton's timer here. See our, our leaderboard on the left side right here. Sexton's 5.3 seconds behind the leader. Now, you would expect with the start that he had, uh, Tomac, Roxon have been up front. Sexton is is right there. He's working his way through the pack and actually gaining time on the lead. The last time around, Tomac, when he had clear racetrack, ran a 217.9. He also ran a 217.0 earlier in it, where uh, Sexton ran a 217.2. It's his best lap. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh. That's not going to be it. Yep. That's going to put you up into the 218 right there. That little mistake cost him in that lap time. Ferrandis. Whoa. Oh, oh, another oh. mistake by Sexton at the top. Well, and then see the berm just gave out right there. At the bottom of the wall, Anderson goes through and the berm collapses. So then Sexton goes in there wanting to lean the Honda over and just bury it and get on the throttle. But he got in there and realized that he had to stand the bike up a little bit and be cautious to get through because all that dirt from the, the berm and the rut had collapsed right in the line. So Sexton looking to regroup and go back after Anderson who's got him held to a little over a second of a gap. And the uh, lap time, identical. 217.9 for Tomac, 217.9 for Anderson. And now we'll get another update as they come across the line here. Sexton just has such a, That's such a, 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 Sexton, Jeff. a beautiful, yep. fluid style about him, right? Him, him and Jet Lawrence actually ride quite a bit alike, right? They're kind of a very, a very similar build. Um, very easy on the bike. Doesn't look like he uses a lot of energy. <clears throat> he does stand up a lot. And I think on a day like today, if you can stand up, the more that you can be on the pegs, the better. Because there seems to be a lot of these square edge bumps that are starting to emerge. And if you're sitting down, those really jar the motorcycle. And that's when you can make some big mistakes. But if you're on the pegs, it lets the suspension work a little more. You've got your legs and your ankles, your knees to absorb some of that uh, abrupt, uh, you know, kick that the bike gets. Plessinger, who had a great race going here last year, was running in second. He was the only rider really to keep Roxon in sight, but then he went flipping, literally flipping, did a backflip, landing off a jump, not on purpose, and that was the end of his race day and really ended his momentum that season. And I talked to Plessinger yesterday. He said, yeah, he's been thinking about that for a year, getting back to a track he really likes, and then here's Savachi. He's been pretty solid here as a fill-in for Monster Energy Kawasaki. I yeah. haven't seen Cirillo out with injury. Yeah, Savachi earlier today in qualifying had some great lap times, really agreeing with this motorcycle. Right? Things have been going all right for him. And that is eighth. Dungy is between Savachi here watching here and Plessinger. And... Uh, Hey, as JT mentioned on the podium earlier, they got some new gear there to, uh, debuting today with Fly Racing. So Savachi's showing off some new colors. Yeah, lots of color hits right there. No doubt. Glowing. That's good on the Cowie. So Savachi, yeah, he was coming back from an ACL injury. Cowie actually held him out of the opening round of the season because they didn't think he was ready yet. So that's how much of a work in progress this has been. He's had a moto where he's on the podium back at Redbud. And then he said that he started setting the standards too high. Once he got that one moto podium, he wanted to be there every week and he admitted he was riding maybe too hard. And he's just got to take his position and not try to overdo it. We go a little further forward, it's a battle with the Red Bull KTM teammates, which is Plessinger and 
Dutchie on the five. Dutchie looking to make the move on the inside. Side by side they go. Lessinger holds him off. But Dutchie switch. Whoa, he's in the grass. Whoa. He was in the grass. Pass in the grass. Point. Wow. Didn't quite make it happen. But Dungey all over this Unadilla track looking for a way around. Dungey's such a legend of this championship with uh, pretty much second in most of the stats. In or at least all the, all the yeah. important ones, yep, right? Yep. Wins, podiums, and moto wins. That says a lot. And uh, honestly, it's only Ricky Carmichael ahead of him. So he's like first, first mortal. But he does have Eli Tomac, as far as some of those stats go, mm -hmm. breathing down his neck in a few of the categories. Hey, we're halfway through this moto, 15 minutes down, 15 minutes before we take the two laps to go sign out, and you can save 15% or more on your insurance with a 15-minute phone call to Geico. Keep watching this one, though. Plessinger and Dungy hooking it up for sixth and seventh. Go back to the Thor battle box. That is Anderson and Sexton still duking it out for third. Now, the good news is Sexton is a little bit closer to Tomac than he was earlier, so they're keeping, and he just made the move. I think he just made the move on Anderson right there. Where did Anderson go? Man, so Anderson lost a lot of ground there. It didn't go down. They see Ferrandez is right behind him. So that was big. Sexton made the move. Yeah, and look at this. This last half a lap, he's made up about a half a second. So now in the fours, 4.6 seconds off of the lead. Yeah, we, saw it I mean, we, we still have half the race to go. I mean, we're just past the halfway point, plus we got two laps on top of that. Sexton has shown that he can stay in it, like, and he's got a lot of determination. I mean, he and Tomac are only separated by five points coming into this, array, uh, this event for the championship. Send it back down to JT. Guys, you mentioned Chase Sexton. He just turned in one of the best laps, the fastest lap on, on the track on the last lap around. You see him pulling up to the back of Ken Roxon, and he looked like he struggled a few laps ago. He smoothed out a little bit, figured his lines out, and he's making a run maybe at Tomac here. Well, that's what the fans at Unadilla wanted to see. Yet another Sexton-Tomac battle. Roxon stands between wow. them. Maybe not for long. Sexton to the inside takes the measure of his Honda teammate. No, Roxon wanting to fight back on it. Sexton's got it. Wow, he is just, he's on rails right now. He is just so, well, was. <laughs> that's that tricky corner right there. He's kind of all over the place, but that's how it goes. Everybody is uncomfortable at this point. Sexton is probably the least uncomfortable, I guess would probably be the best way to put it. But he's moving. Oh, they continue I mean, to close. I mean, he's three and a half seconds on Tomac. So what's going to happen? Is Tomac going to have to kick it into another gear? Can he? Is Tomac riding at at, at his highest pace? Is the pressure of Sexton being there going to gonna rattle him at all? Or is he going to like, okay, time to go here with 10 minutes plus two laps to go? Sexton has taken what was once a 5.7 second deficit and gotten it down to 3.5. And while doing that, he had to get around Ferrandez. Anderson and Roxon, so he is absolutely on the charge right now. Yeah, he definitely has his lines figured out. Right here is where he made the move on Anderson last lap around. He's got that turn dialed really well. And for the top of the hill, we go to the bottom, and you can see glimpses of the blue fenders of Tomac's Yamaha in the distance. Yeah, and, and if you're Tomac, you're looking over and you're just shaking your head like, oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Game on. Anderson and Ferrandez duking it out for fourth. What a return to the series for Ferrandez to get the hole shot. Yeah, watch what happens here in this motosport.com hole shot. You got Jason Anderson, Monster Energy Kawasaki way wide right there, just hard on the throttle. You got Ferrandez chasing him down. And, or they're giving it to Ferrandez. That's right. He crosses the line. This is that long hole shot right there. Welcome back. Dylan That's and good. these two are still Take battling it. about that close right now. Oh no, Ferrandez must have made a mistake because Anderson has a couple bike lengths on him now. Back to the top of Gravity Cavity, one of the most famous jumps in all of motocross. So much history here at Unadilla, the only track on our circuit that has been here since the first year of this championship back in 1972. And Anderson now getting Roxon within his sights. Be a fight for the podium. And Sexton has taken it down from three and a half to two and a half seconds. It is far from over at Dilla. 
Renee, bank manager. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. We're back. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross from upstate New York. Unadilla, Jason Anderson has made the move on Ken Roxon for third. I'll show you how he did it. Just down the inside past the first turn area. Just got a good drive over that double and took the line away. Look at this. Ferrandis now all over Roxon. And we've also heard that Sexton continues to close on Tomac. He's got it down to 1.4 seconds. So lots of action on this racetrack. Oh, big mistake there by Roxon. Hit a kicker on that double come back out of that turn. That's allow Ferrandis to close up even more. Ferrandis digging around the outside. He's good at the beginning of the race, a little mid-race low, but he has come back to life, challenging Roxon. Yeah, things are starting to un unravel for the 94 of Ken Roxon. Meanwhile, Ferrandis, he's happy just to be back. Run that number one plate. Oh, another mistake by Roxon. Can Ferrandis take advantage? That is the lead right there in the Thor battle box. Wow. Point three second lead for Sexton. Unbelievable. He was almost six seconds back. And he has done it. No, no he's done he's it. in the lead. He has taken the lead. And man, did he grease that corner at the bottom of the hill. He has just eaten Tomac up here. I mean, did you hear the crowd yes. in the background of our... Yep. Uh, uh, we were on that other shot. You heard the crowd screaming about something. I'm Sexton is just marching through all the way to the lead here. And I've seen Tomac's body language. That did not look like full aggression from Tomac. I'm not sure what's happened. Is it either Sexton has found another level or Tomac's having a problem? But this race has changed and quickly. Chase I mean, Sexton. He passed him a quarter of a lap ago. And, and it's already, it'll, it'll be three seconds by the time we get around to the finish line here. Yeah, Coming out of gravity cavity. Again, he had a ton of ground to make up to even get there. Sexton. Pulling I mean, the momentum back in this series right now. Yeah, 2.8 seconds. I mean, after some of the rides that, that these guys have put on, I stop making the keys to the race, get a good start. Sexton's going up. That's not one of my keys. I don't need that. No. Top 10 will be good enough. Yep. I mean, we still have six minutes plus two laps to go. And look how good he looks on the bike. He's, oh, that was close. Close right there with the 84. Okay, we got a little snip of the pass here. Oh! Well, that was close. Wow. Literally wheel to wheel over that jump. I mean, they touched in the air. Well, and that's that same section where Sexton got by Anderson. He's got that left side going up, uh, what would we call it, the elevator there. He's got that dialed in, but look at the fans just cheering him on. I mean, this is absolute perfection right now. And he doesn't look like, it, it doesn't look like, He's like, it's just out on a Saturday afternoon ride, if you will. And this is something you do not see happen. He did beat Tomac in the previous moto at Washougal, but he did it by holding him off. But to run Tomac down in the second half of a race, you almost never see happen. Now, one caveat I'll throw in there. Again, this is statistically, at least, Tomac's worst track. For whatever reason, he does not have an answer for the 23 right now. Yeah, it's, it's crazy that Tomac has won three... Well, he won three straight titles in this class, the 450 class of pro motocross, and has never won this event on a 450, which is kind of mind-blowing because he's basically, he's, he's third all-time on all the important uh, uh, stats, you know, win list, but just not Unadilla. No, and has not won a moto here, Tomax, since 2018. Mm -hmm. Although, really, no one had because Roxon had dominated, but it's not maybe Tomax's best track, whatever the reason. Sexton has come from 5.7 seconds down to 3.7 seconds up. This is a defining ride here. I mean, Tomac had won eight motos in a row, a couple of overalls, had taken the points lead, and now Sexton is looking at completely turning the tables. Yeah. One thing I love about watching Chase Sexton ride, like with this technique, is 
his ability, so his his shoulders and his head, like you look at his helmet, it, it's so still, like it, like it never moves. Everything else moves around him, but it's like it's like he's, it's almost like he's intentionally holding his head or like trying to keep it still. But that's just uh, part of his technique. It's really flawless at this point. And our ETS Fuels drone showing you strafing the countryside Whoa, here. Oh, look at that kicker right there. And because the track is is so dry, okay, so different types of, uh, you know, a terrain, but when it's dry and that loose, dry dirt with the rock starts to break apart, you get these, these kickers, these square edges, uh, these double lifts on the top of these jumps, and that's when you can really cross, uh, you know, the bike gets kicked side to side. Whereas if it was a deep rut, you kind of stay in the rut, and that keeps the bike straight. So here you've got uh, totally different conditions than what we've had at this race the past few times we've been here. Sexton, a dominant ride. Now, meanwhile, Tomac ran a 221 the last time around, and even Anderson from third ran a 219. Anderson would still have five seconds to make up on him, so it's a long way to go, but it's come unraveled here for the number three, which you don't see often. Well, and this may be a situation for Tomac going, okay, um, you know, he's a veteran. He's played, okay, I got to be smart here. Maybe bike setup isn't what he wanted. Maybe, hey, we, we need to make a change to the shock or whatever. I mean, he's a multi-time champion because if he needs to make adjustments after this moto, he has ability to do that and regroup. But certainly right now he's going, okay, I can't match uh, the pace of Sexton, but for sure he can't let Anderson sneak up on him and take any points away, right? No, he's this got is back. Gonna be, it was yep. a five-point lead coming into today. If it finishes just like this, his lead is then two. Oh, boy. <laughs> We're watching Dungey closing in on Roxon. This would be for fifth. There's Roxon on the 94. Yeah, working you his lap, way through lap traffic, yeah. A few lap riders in there. And probably going to see a couple of blue flags flying by the... AMA officials, if you're new to motocross, you see that blue flag. There it is right there. What is that about? Okay, that means the leaders are coming by. You're getting lapped. You're getting put a lap down. So hold your line. Be aware of other riders around you that the lead group is coming by. Right there, the 787 just looked over his shoulder. All right, so we're going to put you to the test here, Fro. JT, what do you got trackside? So I just have a question for Fro on the mental side of this. You know, we saw Eli Tomac win nine motos in a row, and that certainly had an effect on Chase Sexton. But this would be two motos in a row going back the other way. Now, Jeff, what does that do? Like, what signals does that send? How much can Chase Sexton gain from that mentally going into moto two? Well, it's going to be frustrating for Tomac for sure. Is that what you're talking about? Like, how's like yeah. how's Tomac's demeanor? Yeah, but he's a, he's a multi-time champion. He's going, okay, we got to make adjustments. They got to work harder. They know it's not going to be easy. These championships, they don't just give them out. You have to earn them every step of the way. And he's being challenged right now. And so they're going to have to, I, I think there's probably something with the bike and the settings, chassis settings, that they're going to have to make some adjustments, right, and see if he can't come out uh, and be better in the second moto. Anderson's charge stalled. He added down to 10 seconds on Tomac, and now it's 12.9 only because Anderson went back into the 221s, which is the lap time that Tomac had already been running. At one point, Anderson was making up some ground. So the only rider now under the 220 lap time mark on the track, no surprise, is Sexton. I mean, now he's, he's got to bring it home. It's going to be two to go. I mean, he is just, he's just making it look easy. I mean, they've got the bike set up, and the way he's riding it is like... Perfect. Yeah, and maybe the toughest track to make look easy, and that's what Sexton has done right now. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be more difficult as the day goes on. You know, in motocross, the track just goes away, it gets rougher, more holes, more bumps, more rocks are starting to come up. It's gonna get really skaty, but you also have to be smart. And Unadilla is one of those places where uh, if you're not feeling the flow, you hit every bump, every rock, every edge, everything out there. Sexton's like, yeah, I got it. Every line's perfect. He looks great. Two lap board is out. 10 second lead probably. Here comes Tomac right here. Wow. I mean, Tomac can't be happy about it, but he also has to be smart and realize, hey, if I don't have it this moto, I'm, I'm gonna have to go back to the truck and regroup, make some changes. JT, anything you've heard or seen from that number three camp? 
Yeah, I spoke to his team manager, Jeremy Coker, and he basically said that, you know, Tomac, this is not his favorite track. As we know, he's never won here, but he kind of felt like he had a limit that he wasn't going to go past. And once he got there, we see how fast Chase Sexton's going. I just don't think he's willing to push the limit past that and risk the championship. Did you, do you get the feeling that a 2-2 would be fine? Well, if you had asked me that 15 minutes ago, I would say no, but I think with the <laughs> pace that Sexton is turning in, I, I think he just has to settle at this point. Mm. Hard to believe you're saying that about Eli Tomac, but I mean, we're still in the, the first tape. moto even, you know? Yep, yep, there's the tail of the tape. He's 10 seconds back at 2.18. At one point, they were exchanging 2.17s, but he's not been quite able to maintain that as the track has gotten rougher. And Sexton... Yeah, but a wise, mature rider yep. says, okay, I, if I don't have it that day, then I don't have it that day. I'm going to have to make up some points then next week or next race. One of my tracks, that's, that's one of my better tracks. But it's weird, like, to think that as successful as Tomac has been in all of his uh, professional career, that here at Unadilla, there's just something about this track that, that he just doesn't or hasn't been able to necessarily figure out and be comfortable here. And think about it, we're also only talking about second. Like, oh, I know, I, I mean, know. The standards are very oh, high. It's a bad day. He's running yeah. second. You know, yeah, that's the, uh, 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 that's not the case. It, you know, you, we may look back a, you know, a month from now and go, oh, that was a really smart ride, Tomac. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Right? You Take never know. second when it's there. Yep. You watch Anderson and then Ferrandis going by. Nice return of the series for Ferrandis in the fourth place spot. Dungey has made the move on Roxon. That'll put him in fifth. I can't imagine if you're Ferrandis. Fourth? That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. He would be happy with that. Yeah, he's feeling good. And the same thing for Ryan Dungey here, the number five multi-time champion, like we mentioned, second, basically in all the all-time lists, wins, overalls, all that stuff. Um, I spoke to him when we were driving in today, seeing him in the pits, and just asked him how he's doing, and you having a good time with it. He says, yeah, you know, he goes, I just, you know, I just want to finish a little better. I just, like, I'm just not, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Keep in mind, he was out of this championship for five years. If you if you just watch this, he hasn't ridden this championship in five years. He retired from racing and yeah. decided to come back, and he's still at this pace after uh, him and his wife Lindsay having children, starting a family, all these uh, having all these other business projects and all this. And when I was speaking to his uh, mechanic Carlos Rivera yesterday, who had worked with Cooper Webb on his championship runs, uh, joins back together with Dungey, right? And he, I said, how's he different? He goes, he's just more relaxed. You know, it's a, not, not so much stress on him. He goes, but, man, he just, he wants to win. <laughs> it's like. Can't get it out of your system. No, Can't. no. It's, it's going to be tough, though. I mean, this man right here, his last couple racing, races are proving that he has done the work. And uh, he's, he's got focused, you know. We've heard Dungey that, by the way, they're investigating. He may have jumped where there was a wheels on the ground flag. That's a safety measure. So he might be penalized. We'll have to see how that turns out a little later today. But right now, the story's pretty simple. No one had an answer for Chase Sexton. And it honestly looked desperate. He was eighth or ninth early. Yeah. Wasn't moving up in a hurry. Thinking, man, can he even get up to second just for the points? And then once he got to second, it was unbelievable. He made mincemeat of that lead that Tomac had built up. And it's just not something against yeah. Tomac. And this shows the level that Sexton is on this year. Yeah, I mean, and, and to ride the motorcycle at this pace and do what he's done, all of the training, the fitness, the practicing, it has been put in. The work is put in during the week, and then it manifests itself on race day. And, and that's like, sometimes, you know, this looks like one of the easiest races that he's ever ran. You know, it's harder to lose than it is to win, you know? Maintaining Most the speed the time. all the way to the end. Most okay, the not all the time. All right, yeah, exactly. Well, it was fairly easy or looked that way for him. Ooh. Chase Sexton, a statement moto win here at Unadilla. Now two moto wins in a row, and this one a come from behind effort, proving Jeff Emick's theory that the start is so critical wrong. Yeah, we'll no, yeah, a little more yeah, exciting. I've been this wrong way. for 15 years. <laughs> hey, every once in a while, you just have so much speed, it doesn't matter if you start in eighth, and that was the case. Is that uh, Anderson going by? I'm watching that battle. Anderson gets third. Ferrandis, Dungey. I think it was Marchbanks and Savachi we saw actually going over the top of the tunnel. Long That'd ride be a battle back for eighth here and to the podium. Yeah. Back behind the starting line. 
through the AMA officials area, through some fans, and then you finally get to this podium, podium area. And what's great about what the, they've done here at Unadilla is they put that right here where the fans, once, once he goes on the other side of his podium area, the fans are right there, and uh, you know, when they do the interviews, and we'll be talking to JT here soon. Him and uh, Brandon like, oh, Zimmerman is mechanic. Yeah, I did. I doesn't even look <laughs> like he put in a 30 plus two. His hair is still dry, you know? Oh, he looked great. I mean, that that was a real statement race. But a win, Tomac second, Anderson third. Be a fight for the overall win here as the Fly Racing 32nd card goes up. Sexton did not get the good start in the first moto and was still able to win it. See if he can replicate that kind of ride here. That's why I left it off my keys to the race. Don't need it anymore. Yeah, Starts don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> don't need it. Okay, so here we go. I'll tell you, it'll feel a lot better if it's not eating roost, though, oh, the man. entire time. The roost here hurts on the 450. Trust me, I want this whole shot. Here we go. Tomac going to lead them into turn one with Sexton, Sexton on the outside. Ooh, Sexton got into that loose dirt, almost went down. Justin Barsha, I believe, in the number two spot. But Motosport.com whole shot goes to Tomac. Aaron Plessinger right there. So it's Barsha, Plessinger, Sexton with Tomac in the lead. And I think Anderson working down the inside of the green Kawasaki. Beta Motorcycles drone shot as we hit gravity cavity up and out. So Plessinger loves this track. He's got a good start here in second. We'll see what he can do on the Red Bull KTM. Well, whoa, was that Barsha went, yeah, went wide in that turn? A lot of dust there on the outside tracks, a lot drier. They put down some water. It's going to make it a little bit slippery here on the opening laps. Fixed the takeoff at the tabletop. Sexton filing into fourth with Anderson right behind him. Did not see any of Barsha in the first moto. Didn't have a good start, but uh, much better for Barsha this year. Been a bit of a struggle of a season for him based on his usual standards. He makes a mistake, and Sexton is by immediately. Wow. Sexton making short work. That pass for third. Roxon back in eighth right now. He's made a one pass over Gilbert on the Husqvarna, the number 323. Oh, Gilbert back start. out of uh, the UK. Raced with us early in the year. He went back home to race his own national championship. And now must have a weekend off back in the U.S. So we want Sexton here. He's closer to the front than he was in the first moto. And going after Plessinger for second. Sexton pulling a tear off there over the massive tabletop here that comes back in. Up to the top of the uh, elevator. And then now the wall. Yeah, I mean, this track, every part of this track practically has a nickname. And somewhere along the line, something significant happened. Yep. But this, this is, our cameras do not do the wall justice. It is really steep. It looks like they put some water down because it was getting dusty. Yeah, you can see standing water actually in spots, so they've really got to be careful picking their way around. And Sexton goes after Plessinger for the number two position as they race down what used to be the finish line stretch where it hooks onto the start. Oh, they almost come together. Sexton did not really have room to make that happen, but he tried. Yeah, it was almost like he was forcing something that didn't really have an opportunity to succeed at and he doesn't want to force that right now and make a make a mistake to take him out of the running for this unbelievable what he did at the bottom of gravity cavity he made up a full bike length on a straightaway wow. and now he's by i don't know what sexton is doing today but he is doing it right he just blew by plessinger yeah he is riding with so much confidence right now the crowd definitely is going to let tomac know that something's happening behind him like as a rider you feel that like and he's like okay here we go i don't know if tomac has an answer today for sexton we're about to find out because sexton now has a clear track being in second he's got a clear track up to tomac and we, i mean we have 26 minutes plus two laps left in this moto how tomac much can that uh, monster yamaha star racing team figure out in between motos for tomac if sexton wins this moto and tomac goes second points lead yes goes to sexton sexton the red plate yeah. okay so you're gonna wonder 
if Tomac wasn't feeling entirely comfortable or feeling like he could run the pace of Sexton, did they make any change to the bike? Was there any changes to the, his mindset? Where is he at? We're gonna we're gonna see over the next 30 minutes if he's gonna give it everything this moto and lay it all on the line, or if he's if Sexton catches him, if he's gonna play it smart. Yes, it's a two-point lead in the standings for Tomac right now. The difference between a first and a second is three points. Anderson now closing on Barsha. This is for fourth. Plessinger in third, right ahead of them. Then it's Roxon, Dungey, Zabachi, Craig, and Gilbert. What we don't see is Ferrandis. He's 12th. I'll give you the Thor battle box. Those are your leaders. Oh, and Anderson, a good drive here. Closing on Barsha. Goes from outside to inside. And beautiful job by Anderson to seal him off. Wow, that was such a nice slide job right there. He got in, didn't use any of the main lines. That was really unorthodox, just made a whole new line. He, probably his instincts were telling him that that turn, everything's pushing too wide. There's a lot of track on the inside of the exit of that turn. Maybe even fresh dirt where there's a little more traction. He made it work. Big leap out of gravity cavity. Here comes Anderson now to close on Plessinger. And Anderson on the podium in our last race. On the podium in our last moto earlier today. Anderson to do it again. Yeah, Anderson got such a, a unique style. He's got this when when he's feeling it, when he's feeling good, he's got this like attack mode that he goes into. He hangs off the side of the bike a lot. He kind of crouches down. Way different, totally different technique than let's say Chase Sexton. They look completely different on the bike to me. But also when he gets comfortable, I mean. He's an animal on that. He's, he, but he's just always kind of hanging off the side of the bike to me, you know? That's just his style. He makes it work. Yeah, when Anderson's going, you would think it's impossible for anyone to beat him because he looks fast. Yeah. Because uh, it looks like he's going all out. Now, yes, the more smooth style, those guys can go the same speed. Yeah. But there's no doubt of the effort when Anderson's really got it going. And Plessinger is going to have to deal with that right now. This would be for the number three position up ahead. Sexton, I believe it was 2.4 seconds at one juncture. It's now 2.1. She's starting to close on Tomac just a little bit. Plessinger putting in some good laps right now. Last time around, the lap times were 219s. Plessinger at 221. Anderson at 220. Tomac would have the overall today with a tiebreaker if it ends like this. 1-2-2-1. One, two, two, one. But that's a massive if. You have to feel that the battle will be coming soon as Sexton's not just going to settle for the number two spot here. Plessinger looking to throw down. Yeah, big, he looks a lot better here. Big flick of the bike there as he goes over that tabletop. And Plessinger says this track and the upcoming Ironman National two weeks from now are his two favorite tracks. So he's, he's still confident he can get his year on track. I think Anderson lost some time. Oh, yep. no, there he is. He must have just been... Inside line, creating some, something new again. So it's been a disappointing season for Plessinger. Got second behind Anderson, actually, at the second round of Monster Energy Supercross way back in January. It looked like that was setting him up for a great season. But he wasn't able to replicate that, then later broke his arm. Uh, as one podium here in motocross, but this is a guy that likes to be winning races. But much improved so far here. Yeah, no doubt. It just, Jason, look how the bikes are just jumping around, like sharply moving, okay? There's like roller bumps where the bike will move back and forth at a slower pace. Today, the bike is just, it's so super choppy, square edge bumps, and the bike's just front to back, is just up and down. And that tells me just how rough it is out there. Well, I want to know the combination of how slick it is in spots and the fact that the wheels are never settled. They're just bouncing and bouncing. Oh, look at Anderson with the new line. So how disconcerting is it to the rider? It's almost like the bike has never settled. That's got to be hard to, to feel confident when you're pushing it. Yeah, Unidilla, you, Unidilla is really unique that way. And here we are at the toughest part of the day. Hey, Anderson creating some new lines there. Went from inside over, over the inside rut, jumped to the outside. But it's 
this track is is rough and nasty and it, it in the past it's been more like muddy like deep ruts yeah okay now it's a little bit more hard pack and all these square edge bumps are starting to uh, form oh anderson was trying to set up an outside he Watch switches this. over cut back yep, here it comes oh, oh. Plessinger gonna be able to hold it okay let's see if he uses this line again Watch, he's going to enter the turn. He's way on the inside. Oh, completely. Well, you said way on the inside. You're not wow. joking. Too far inside there. He missed all the breaking bumps that Back time. Back to the battle. Look at this. Sexton now has Tomac in his sights. It started as a 2.4 second gap. It is 1.0 now. It's 1.4, now 1.0. Sexton just has something dialed today at Unadilla. Can even Tomac stop him? Leaping out of gravity cavity. Is this going to be it? That inside line's really good. Got it. Wow. Chase Sexton. What is going on with him? Now, Tomek, a mad dash down to the inside to try to return the favor. Can't get it done. And, yeah, and, and here, I mean, Sexton clearly is comfortable at the pace that he's on. Is, is, is there any chance that Tomac can, you know... Stay on his wheel, learn some of his lines, figure out where this flow is coming from. And in the first moto, Tomac said, I tried to learn from him, but I didn't stay with him that long, so I didn't get to see much. And he's marching away again. I cannot believe what we're seeing. Let's send it down to JT. Guys, Chase Sexton is doing exactly what he did in the first moto. He kind of figured the track out, checked out the lines. I think he let it dry up a little bit from that water they added. And then he dropped the hammer and he set his best lap of the race that last lap. And you see him already starting to check out. Now, as we mentioned in Moto 1, statistically, this is not Tomac's best track. He's not won a Moto here since 2018. Well, let's, let's take a look at how Sexton, why, I mean, Sexton just comes out of gravity cavity and airs it out. Tomac looks over like, uh-oh, I better move wide. I mean, Sexton just won't be denied right now. Anderson is back in this battle for third against Plessinger. Last time he got a great drive up this hill, and he did it. Those ruts were so difficult on most of the riders. He greased it. He's into the number three spot. So Anderson rapidly becoming Mr. Third in this series behind Tomac and Sexton. So he's riding well. He's beating everybody else, but those two are just on a crazy level right now. Yeah, I mean... 11 seconds off the lead. It's not bad, but, you know, it's not where he wants to be. I mean, I think he's content with this for now. And he, after the first moto, had his podium speech, and talked about, hey, look, I'm still learning the bike. We're trying to get it together. He hasn't rode motocross in a while. And that's, and that's just the difference right now, like, is, is that when you're battling for the title, is you just find a way to go to that next level. And that's obviously where Sexton and Tomac are at. And Sexton has gone next level beyond the next level. And I think the real question now, Jeff, is, is this Sexton just finding another gear or is it a Unadilla thing? That's really going to be the question moving forward because today he's left no doubt. Yeah, well, neither rider has had a tremendous amount of success uh, at, the, at this yeah. racetrack. But yep. <laughs> Sexton... Sexton's figured something out. Yes. Right? All right, so Tomac down 1.8. We'll show it to you in the Thor battle box. Can he stay with him and learn something from Sexton? He's keeping it closer this time than he did in Moto 1. You got to give him the three-top champ credit for that. Hanging in there, looking to keep some pressure on. Yeah, well, in the in the first Moto, okay, you can, you can take the second. If you win the second Moto, you can still win the overall. You also have the ability to go back to the rig, make some changes to the bike, sort of regroup, watch, talk to your advisors and coaches and everybody. But now there's no third moto, so this is it. So now you leave it all out there. First moto, okay, need to make some changes. There's no time for, there's no changes after this, right? So now is when you really have to let it hang out. And Tomax finding a way to do that. He is, he is, he's closing, I think. Yeah, he's got it down to 0.8. So it was about a second and a half. Now it's half of that. And this is where the real mental uh, battle comes in. Because now Sexton thinks, okay, blew him away the first moto. I'll go out and do it again. Uh-oh. 
I'm not pulling away from him. Yeah. Okay. This is when when the mind games start to play, and this is where me personally, I want to see if Sexton can withstand this pressure from Tomac, not make any mistakes. Okay, he did it a race ago. Got to do it again. Keep doing it again until you can prove it, right? That is really one of the big questions on Sexton. He has been fast since the moment he jumped on a 450 at the start of the summer of 2020. But the mistakes have proven costly. He's cleaned that up tremendously this year. First or second in every moto this year except one. So watch this battle, by the way. You've got Barsha and Roxon, and I believe Dungey in this fight. That is for fifth, sixth, and seventh. And you notice there on that Thor battle box on the right, I'm really focused on the lines that Tomac is taking. For the most part, he's now just following in Sexton's lines. Also, coming out of the gravity cavity and some of these other jumps, much more aggressive, airing it out, okay? Putting that extra effort. And the further you jump, the harder you land, the more energy it takes, the more strength it takes. It takes it out of you. Maybe a you know, quarter of a second faster, but it's also harder to do, okay? So this is this type of moto where you're looking at two of the best in the world, and they're going to try to leave it all out there right now. Long way to go, only halfway through this moto, 15 minutes remain. In 15 minutes, you can save 15% or more on your insurance with a quick call to GEICO. And this little, is so little, critical right little now. Little secret, I did. You did it? Yeah. It saved me some money. It saved me some money. Hey, I'm not a liar, okay? Yeah. So here we go with a sky shot, and Tomac, yeah, this is a lot closer than it was an hour ago in Moto1. Can See, he keep it that way? Following those lines, but can he match his pace and his flow, okay? And how much energy is he putting out? Where only Eli really knows if, if he's on the edge or not. Like, how safely is he doing this? And you start to get into that risk, risk factor. Like, if, oh, oh, there's the dangle I was talking about. In Moto One. He's got the leg out behind him <laughs> going up the hill, which is not really what you would coach, but he makes it work for his unique style. Oh, he's digging right now. Elon Tomek is not going to go down here at Unadilla in Moto2 without a fight. And as they do that, they start to do what they've done the last couple of weeks. March away from everyone else. They now have 17 seconds on Anderson. Wow. Then you saw that big battle. Plessinger, Barsha, Roxon, Dungey are all close. That is fourth through seventh. And look, Tomek a little quicker than Sexton last time around. What do you see there, Jason Thomas? So this is really important, guys. Last moto, Eli Tomac could not get out of those 218s. When Sexton made his charge, he was still there 218, even as he watched Sexton ride in the distance. This moto, he's been able to drop down to 217 and turned his best lap of the moto the lap prior. And this is what champions like Tomac do. He's trying to adjust, but as quickly as he started to put pressure on Sexton, Sexton has responded and has opened it up to 2.2 seconds. Yeah, Sexton was about nine-tenths of a second quicker last time around. Tomac, I think it's going to be worse than that. This lap, just when we thought that, okay, he was staying, hanging in there, it's going to be a little more than 2.2 seconds. Here, that two-stroke out there, that means Sexton's going to get into a few lapped riders. Oh, and he is marching away again. Does Tomac have another charge in him? Let's give you the motorsport.com. Whole shot replay real fast here. Look at Sexton go so far wide, he almost goes down. Yeah, as Tomac way, controls it. Yep. way out there. Tomac clearly dominated this whole shot. You had Barsha in there, the KTM, uh, Plessinger. Motorsport.com whole shot, though. Number three, Eli Tomac on that Monster Energy Yamaha. Is this that same crazy battle that we had earlier? No, that is still Sexton and Tomac. There we go. Yeah, going he's not up that the elevator. He's not that far off again. Yep. I don't know if Sexton got had any uh, issue with those lapped riders. He's, he, I mean, I, I, it's 1.7. I thought he was dropping back. It was 2.2. Now it's 1.7. He's right back in it. Eli Tomac and Chase Sexton. It has been the story of 2022. Unbelievable racing. And Sexton has to 
rail around the outside to get around the lap rider. They have strengths and weaknesses on different portions of this track because now Tomac has lost a lot of ground after he just made up a bunch. Yeah, it looks like it. We'll, we'll have to check the timing and scoring on the next sector where they go through to see where that's at. But hey, you got to give it to the three time 450 champ here. We got this one time in the 250, so four time Pro Motocross yeah. champion. Yep. He like Tomac. I mean, he's a bad dude. He's going to let it hang out. There's been some motos where he definitely is one of those riders that has that ability to, to the second half of the race to get it together. But this adversary that he has right now with Chase Sexton, it's challenging him. Well, Eli, Eli said last week after Ross Shugel, this is definitely the highest pace that he has ever dealt with trying to win these championships in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Sexton has brought... Let's see if Tomac has an answer today from New York. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Awesome day for a motocross race at Unadilla, and the fans agree they have showed out in huge numbers to watch this. The never-ending battle between Chase Sexton and Eli Tomac. But today it is gone in the Honda Riders corner. Sexton is caught and passed Tomac in both motos. Little mistake, quickly checks the gap over his shoulder. Yeah, feed off the pegs and just looks back like no big deal, kind of roll with it. I mean, he definitely has a rhythm and a flow here today that is unmatched by anyone. I mean, even Eli Tomac, which I, it, it's like you never say that, you know? Exactly. Especially this year when he had that run of nine, 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 nine straight motos. motos in a row. Yeah. And Sexton has taken that and managed to turn it back. Well, and even through nine straight motos of not winning, uh, somewhere along the line, Sexton found a way to still score pretty good points and, and kept himself in the title hunt. This ride right now, the second moto, if it ends just like it is right now, he's taking the red plate. He's taking the points lead. He'll have it back, yes. Yeah, which is really impressive. So I'll post this to uh, Jason Thomas there, who's track side. As you see the championship points. Yes, yeah, Sexton would have the points lead here. JT, I think that's going to be the big question. Is this a Unadilla thing? Or is this Sexton just finding something for the stretch run? That's really going to be the question going into Bud's Creek. Well, I think it could be both, guys. Uh, I don't think this is Eli Tomac's favorite track. I think that's putting it mildly. But I also right. think every time that Chase Sexton does this, he's gaining confidence. He's gaining momentum, and it's going to make it a little bit easier each time. And don't forget, this series, the finale, is at Fox Raceway where Chase Sexton has been absolutely lights out. Yeah, he's yeah. won two overalls there on the trot for him so it's going to be tough if it goes down to the finale to best him at that track we'll go to Bud's Creek we'll go to Iron Man and then that'll be the finale back in California where Sexton went 1-1 at the season opener yeah it just wasn't rock. he didn't just win both motos he dominated absolutely and it kind of like kind of like today checking in with Anderson here who's third around Plessinger and then Barsha there's Plessinger Barsha would be next Still up sure, not exactly where Plessinger wants to be. He'd like to be winning races, but a better ride for him in this photo than Moto 1. And then it's going to be Barsha in fifth of the Troy Lee Designs Red Bull Gas Gas. Just hasn't quite been there for Barsha at the normal level this year outdoors at a really solid Monster Energy Supercross campaign. But here at Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, start of the year off the pace. And we saw him start to get it back at mid-season. This is not a bad day by any means. But he did win a national last year. Quite in contention to do that in 2022. Then you see Roxon and Dungey. Roxon and Dungey starting to hook it up pretty consistently in these motos. And they're battling right now behind the 51. Yeah, I mean, how many, how many great battles have uh, Dungey and Roxon had throughout their career? Epic, yeah. epic one down to the finish in the same championship. What was that uh, 20, 2014? 2014 yep. Well, yeah. we have another one right now. For a look at this. Dungey's all over Roxon. 
This has been the trouble with Rocks in the latter half of the motos. Let's see if Dungy can make it his way around. Dungy. That's Bonnie's the long way. Yeah. <laughs> no berm out there. He got out there like, uh-oh. Nothing to bank off of over here. I have to turn eventually, right? Yeah. He, <laughs> and he gets right back on rocks in here. Oh, and that ruse coming up through there. <laughs> it's races like this. I go, yeah, I'm glad I'm retired right now at this point. <laughs> I did my time. Okay, we head to the sky shot. Lap traffic still all over. There's Roxon. There's Dungey. Now, a yeah. lot of people wondering, Roxon's future here, his contract is up with Honda, and I know he was talking to them at one point, but we have still not heard any sort of confirmation on any deal for next year. So it's kind of curious to have, uh, usually riders at Roxon's level kind of already know where they're going to end up next year. So we'll see how that unfolds as we head into the offseason. A couple more weeks of racing to go. Roxon in sixth, Dungy seventh, Savachi is eighth, Craig, who had a huge crash in practice, struggled a bit today. He is in ninth. And Ferrandis, in his return to racing, is 10th. So a little bit tougher in Moto 2 for Ferrandis than Moto 1, where he was inside the top five. Dungy still digging here on the Red Bull KTM to get Roxon on the Honda. Yeah, he's been working hard just right there in that roost, lap after lap after lap. And uh, eventually, you just get tired of it. You're like, OK, I got I to gotta make a push stay in the ruse but try to make that pass and and a lot of times here with some lapped riders creates a really good opportunity for that makes ken have to make some choices and if he makes the wrong choice and stays gets behind somebody like right uh -oh. here dungy has got it wrong choice you saw it coming and just like that dungy has got the move so that will move dungy into sixth roxon Looking to get it back. Sabachi lurking back there. You see the Green Monster Energy Kawasaki not too far behind these two. Getting a little bit dark here in some of these sections. Sun's starting to set. Creating a little shadowed area there as you get down close to the trees. I've been watching Ryan Dungy all summer long. And the fact that he had been out of this championship for five years, he had been retired, started a family, was a businessman, different projects. The Ryan Dungey Foundation, which you guys got to check that out. Go online, check out, see all the good work they're doing there. And then decided, uh, yeah, he's going to do a little bit of testing for the team. Gets back to Red Bull, KTM, does some bike testing. And they're like, wow, he's riding pretty good. OK, you should do some races. Nah, I don't want to do any races. Okay, I'll do some races. And now here he runs top fives, <laughs> right? Yeah, originally it was only going to be two, is what yeah. he said, just to see where he was. And uh, he's in for the long haul, you know that. Also, salute to the Unadilla fans who, with two minutes and two laps to go here, the fans are going to leave it all on the racetrack. You can hear them really coming to life. I don't even know if they're cheering any particular rider. Oh, yeah. They're just, they got, oh, whatever they got left in the air horns. Oh, yeah, we've had the, the air horns, the, the chainless chainsaws yeah, yeah. The Vufus revved, Zalas. revved out what do you call Vufuzelas <laughs> okay. I believe I got that yeah just you try just it? incredible no, just okay. and just a spectacular crowd here today too uh, we had a chance to go way back in the camping area just unbelievable support here um, just a, a beautiful farm here in upstate and uh, you just think back to the vision that this founder Ward Robinson had for this piece of land when he first rode his motorcycles through it years ago, you know, decades ago. So, yeah, we lost quite Ward spectacle. at uh, 85 years old earlier this week. So obviously it's been tough on the Robinson family to put this event together. While also mourning the loss of their father, who carved a real legacy of this sport. Maybe the most historic track in all of American motocross. It was here in the late 60s, which is essentially when the sport started here and then held huge international races when those were the biggest races in the sport. And that was called the old Trans AMA series in the fall. Epic battles between legends like Bob Hanna and Roger DeCoster. Unadilla, yourself included, Jeff Emmett, you can pretty much find a photo of every rider who's ever been a big name in this sport, oh, yeah. carving laps at this track because it had such an international flair, but also the Americans would come through here as well. Yeah, world champions, national champions, yep. motocross and nations champions. You all had to ride this soil and, and you know, deal with what Unadilla and Mother Nature sometimes yeah. can, can dish out. 
Savacci putting on a great run here. The monster Kawasaki has caught Roxon. This would be for seventh. God, you gotta wonder. I mean, Roxon was your fast qualifier, but this summer, he just late in these motos. It's oh, just yeah. he just doesn't have it. Yeah, and uh, I think it's an illness thing that caught him off in uh, Washougal. Got to wonder if that's a problem here, and that's mm -hmm. really been the story of Roxon for years now. Uh, some sort of illness or, or, or weakness. Uh, not injuries per se, not the typical you know, sprained ankle or bad wrist per se. Yeah. Uh, it has been his health, and he has tried everything, everything. He spent off seasons going back to Europe, working with the, the folks at Red Bull back there in Austria, try to figure it out. When he's on, he's on. Uh, but then there's other days like this where he's fast. But late in these motos, it is tough for the 94. And he's clinging to this seventh place position ahead of Savacci. Yeah, barely. I mean, Savacci's putting on such a good ride right now. A really tremendous effort. And, you know, he, he knows it's Ken Roxon up there. Two-time champion in this class. Former world motocross champion. You know, it looks like Roxon might have gained a couple of bike links right there. But Savacci just laying it all on the line here with two to go. Yeah, but a nice summer for Savachi. He used to be part of that Kawasaki team. Then his position, of two to go. It's taken up by Adam C. and Cirillo, but Adam is out for the summer with a torn ACL. Savachi tore his ACL too, but he rushed back for a shot to get back with his old team and motorcycle. Now, we should have Adam actually with us in the booth uh, upcoming round of this series as he's uh, back on the motorcycle right now. Ferrandis is 10th. Uh, in his comeback from injury, Malcolm Stewart is 16th in his first motocross race since 2014. And this year he was supposed to race the entire series, but he got hurt, twisted the knee in Supercross, said he's been riding for about six weeks. Yeah, and we didn't see uh, on our MAV TV coverage what happened to Malcolm Stewart. I, I did catch the picture on social media that was not favorable. No, big crash his feet were His feet yeah. were higher than his head, and the bike was that. sideways and all that. So... Return back from Malcolm Stewart hasn't gone exactly as planned. Yeah, 16th right now. We talked to him this morning, and he's like, yeah, I've been riding for six weeks, but racing is going to be a totally different deal. He's well aware that it wasn't going to come back overnight for uh, the very popular Malcolm Stewart, but that's the cool thing about these guys, him, Dean Wilson, Ferrandez coming back now. They've got eight motos to build on before the season is over. Well, here it is, event points as they run. That is our overall finish. It's going to be a perfect score. 50. Two moto wins, 225-point scores, 50 points for Sexton. I mean, everybody was talking about Sexton after winning Washugal the last round and overcoming the, the, the challenges by Tomac and beating Tomac. I beat Tomac. He beat him heads up, right? One lap to go here at Unadilla. But now he's, he's gone past Tomac. Oh, yeah. Again, and not just the, the last race was close. He held him off. Yeah. We're at 17 seconds. I forget what the first moto was, but it was a lot. Yes. I mean, this is a total dominance by Chase Sexton here in HRC Honda. And, I mean, he's made, what, two mistakes maybe? Other than that, have been absolutely perfect rides on a racing surface and a track that has given us some incredible highlights or lowlights as I like to call them. Chase has given us the highlights. The rest of the riders, unfortunately, have given, a, given us a ton of lowlights. This is a tough track. A, a t you know, you the main battle is with the track here, not, not the other riders on the track. Sexton has just dominated it. What's interesting was, in his younger days, Sexton was fast, he was solid, but I don't think people seven or eight years ago were saying this is the next big star of this sport. But there was an interesting side note to that, that Sexton from Illinois stayed there and he would not ride during the winter. And the hope was that when it was time to turn pro, he'd be fresher. He wouldn't be burned out on riding and he could make a bigger jump. Yeah, he's celebrating now. That at Redbud a couple of weeks ago and he's like, I think it might have been looking back now, my dad's master plan. You know, peak when it mattered. And I think a lot of people knew this kid had talent, but this kind of talent, this kind of speed, to be able to go one-on-one -on -one with the greats. And he is on the verge right now. Even if he does not get it done for the title this year, he has staked his claim for the future as the guy to beat. 
But he doesn't want to wait and be the guy of the future. He wants to be the guy of right now. Yeah, and, and it's the fashion in which he rides the bike and, and wins these races. Um, pure skill and talent, performance of the motorcycle, everything's working together. Like, like this was a looked like a pretty easy win. I mean, I hate to yeah. use that term so loosely. Right. But They're never easy. We know that. Yeah. Yep. But if if it's not just grinding it out and barely pulling it off, you know, if he can do this, you can duplicate this week after week. And that is the question going into the final three rounds. Has Chase Sexton figured something out that no one can top? He dominates Unadilla. And Matt, <laughs> Matt Burkina, the two-stroke, fist pumps with him over the line. And Sexton is feeling it right now. He knows how critical this is for the title, confidence, momentum. You name it, he's got it right now. Yeah, and Honda and Chase Sexton have just taken the points lead away from Eli Tomac. That doesn't... That, those comments don't get said very much, no, you know? No, no. And, and Tomac, look, it, it's probably going to be Tomac's last run in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, but he's still riding as well now as we've ever seen him go. Mm -hmm. And Sexton is answering against that type of challenge. And he is pumped. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and right, he comes in, as you mentioned, down five points. He gained six today, so he will take the red plate into Bud's Creek. <laughs> Soak this up here. Chase Sexton, absolutely the man today at Unadilla.